hello and welcome in the very first video we are going to create this particular component which is known as the base of the bench wise to complete the entire assembly what we have intended to do now what we are going to do first of all is first of all we are going to open the folder and we are going to create a new folder in whichever drive you would like to so here i am creating a new folder inside a d drive okay so here i can define any name to the folder and it would be recommended so uh, so you define the name as the name of the uh, assembly itself for example this particular assembly will be named as bench wise assembly so i'm going to name this particular folder as bench wise assembly folder okay so this is the name of that particular folder now once we define the name to the folder the first thing is completed that is what we have done is we have defined the location where exactly we are going to save all the parts now we need to make each an individual part inside siemens nx so here we are going to click on new to start with the new part file now i would like uh, to make sure that certain settings are same for all of us now first of all here on the left side if you are new to nx you have to click on roles and here inside role you have to click on content and choose a role called advanced and if you are greeted with this message you have to click ok for this now once it is done then you can click on new and then here you can select the location where exactly you want to save your part so in this case, I want to save my part in the D drive in the Benchwise assembly folder, which we have recently created. Now here I want to name this particular part as base and you can define any name you want to. But for this particular training, we are going to keep this particular file name as base. Now here if I click OK, now I can create a new part called base. And this will be the very first part of this entire drawing. Now let us first take a brief look at how this particular part is going to look like. Now as we can clearly see this particular part is made up of like basic shapes like rectangles, circles and some arcs. Now here as we can clearly see that this particular part or the main body of the bench wise is 190 mm long okay, and 88 mm wide. So here let us start by creating 180 mm long or 190 mm long and 88 mm wide structure. Along with that we need to define the height of 25 to that entire thing. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a new sketch on the top plane and here I'm going to create a center rectangle. So here I'm going to create a center rectangle. Now I can start the center rectangle from the origin and then I can create a center rectangle like this and here the center rectangle length would be 190 by 88. Now technically you will get all the dimensions prepared by the software itself but if you are not getting any dimension prepared by the software you can always click on rapid dimension command and then you can create your own dimensions okay so here it is very necessary for us to give all the dimensions correctly so the length of this particular part is 190 and the length of this particular part is going to be 88 now once completed we can click on finish and then we can click on extrude now once we create an extrude over here okay to make sure the extrude happens perfectly we need to select the sketch from the tree itself so this is known as the part navigator or the tree we have to select the sketch and we have to then click on extrude now once i click on extrude here i have to define the height so for this example the height is going to be 25 so that is what i'm going to define and whenever we are creating an extrude we have to look for three things number one is section what exactly we are trying to extrude number two is how much we are trying to extrude that is the limits okay and number three uh, what we are trying to do with that extrude either we are able to create a body whether we are going to unite with any existing body or we are going to subtract it I generally keep it on inferred basically that means the software will decide what exactly need to be done now here I'll click OK okay and once I'm done with that then I'm going to hide my sketch now to hide the sketch if you're using any older version of NX you can right click and choose hide and if you're not using any older version of NX you can simply click on the hide button over here now once you hide this particular sketch you can clearly see the body is perfectly created now once we get a perfect look at the body here on the top we can see the entire height is 25 but leaving 6 mm from the sides okay from both the sides typically and there is a cutout with a depth of 6 mm so let us try creating that now so for that we need to create a sketch and we need to make our sketch on the top face of the model so here i can just select the top face and then i can click ok now orientation can be different okay no not a problem like it can be either oriented vertically or horizontally but the sketching will remain the same I have to create a rectangle okay, along the longer side of this particular body and then I have to create a rectangle like this. 
Once my rectangle is created perfectly, I just need to simply give a dimension from here to this side as 6. Okay, and if I'm getting a dimension over here for a width or if my sketch is not fully constrained without any outer dimension, then I can drag a corner and I can understand it is not properly connected to the side. In that case, I can select the end point of this line and then the line itself and then I can select this option called point on curve. Now this is a constraint. Okay, and if you are new to NX, you will understand this very shortly. Now here I'll click on finish. Then I'll click on extrude. Then I'll reverse the direction and I'll give a depth of 6 mm. So that will ensure that this cutout is created of 6 mm. Now once I'm done with that, I'm going to click OK and I'm going to hide my sketch. Now here I have successfully created the cutout which I am intended to do. Now next thing is I can see a dotted line here. In this particular PDF, whenever you see a dotted line in red color, that means they are hidden lines. Okay, and we can clearly understand those dotted lines are matching with the line over here of this particular rectangle. Now this rectangle is of size 62 by 162. So let us try to create that rectangle now. So to create that rectangle, I have to now create a sketch on the very bottom face of this particular model. And here I have to create again, it is horizontally or vertically aligned that doesn't really matter. Now here I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to define a rectangle length of 162 by 62. Just to reconfirm the values, have a look at the PDF. So it is 162 by 66. So here I'm defining 162 by 66 as the size of this particular rectangle. Now I'm going to click on finish. Then I'm going to click on extrude. And here I'm going to extrude it upward. So technically you can use this direction arrow here to change the direction of extrude if you want to. And if you have kept it on inferred, the Boolean will be selected as subtract. Okay, Boolean will automatically get selected as subtract. Now here I want the depth of this part. Now to figure out the depth, either I have to look here where I can see this height. Okay, and there is no depth mentioned in this view. But if I look closely in this view on this left side, I can see there is a depth of six. So I need to create a cut with a depth of six and I can clearly create that. Now once I click OK, this is how this particular cut is going to look like. Now once my cut is created, then I have to fill it the four corners which we have over here. And all the four corners will be filleted with a radius of eight. So here, what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to click on edge blend command. I'm going to define a radius of eight. That is always the best choice is to define the value first. And then we are going to select the edges which need to be filleted. If you made a long wrong selection, you can press and hold the shift button on the keyboard and then select any component or any edge you want. For example, here, uh, let's say I made a selection, I made a wrong selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the shift button and then click on that selection again and it will get out of that selection. Now here you have to be very specific with what you are selecting and try to be uh, particular with the selection so that you create a fillet on a clear edges. Now the total count of number of edges over here is set to 4 and the radius value is set to 8. Here we are using G1 as a tangent radius okay, and the profile is set to be circular. Now here if I click OK, this is how the radius is going to look like. Now once the radius are created, the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to create these holes. Now this hole are 50 mm apart okay, from the center of each of the hole and they are 16 mm away from this part. Now here in one of the hole it is mentioned that there are 4 holes of diameter 8. So we just simply need to create 4 holes of diameter 8 and for doing that, I can now create a sketch on this face. I can create a circle here anywhere. I can make sure it's of diameter 8. Either you can type it while creating a circle or else what you can do is you can create a circle then go to rapid dimension and give a diameter here of diameter 8 and because it is known as a rapid dimension it will do the work for you. Now I have to click on the mirror command here. Okay, so mirror command is over here. I have to click on the circle which need to be mirrored then the center line and this is how it's going to get mirrored. So I'm selecting the x-axis as my center line. I'll click apply. Then I'm going to select both the circles. Then again a center line will be my y-axis this time and I'm going to click OK. Now once I'm done with that, some important dimension need to be defined and while doing an assembly, make sure all your dimensions are correct. Otherwise the parts will not going to fit together. So I'm defining the dimension here between this two part as 50 as this as shown and between this and the line as 16 as shown. So here I'm creating both the dimensions perfectly. Now once the dimensions are created, I'm going to click on finish. 
I'm going to click, I'm going to make sure the sketch is selected, the entire sketch is selected from the navigator. Then I'm going to click on extrude. Now by default it is extruding upward. So I'm going to click on this flip arrow to change the direction to downward. Now because I want my hole to be of the true depth, like the entire depth of this particular part, I'm going to select the end limit value as until next. As soon as I select the end limit value as until next, the hole goes through the part and we can clearly see that the model is completely visible. Now here I'll click OK and this is how the holes are going to look like. Now I can hide my sketch and we have completed the first task that is of creating the holes. Now I have successfully completed this red color dotted line okay, which we have over here and I have also successfully completed this red color uh, dotted line or this particular circles what we have over here. Next task here is to understand what this red color dotted line represent and what this blue color line represent over here because they are the same thing. Now here on this section view where we have a cut section of this model from here, we can clearly see there is a slot on either sides and here the slots are of 6 by 6 and they are at a height uh, typically. So we need to figure out at what height the slots are okay? because here there is no mention for the height. Now clearly understanding by the, by the look of the video, we can clearly say that this particular slot is at the height of 6 okay? from the bottom, technically not at the height of 6 because otherwise this will be overlapping each other. Okay, So I'm going to consider the height of 7 for this slot and the slot is of size 6 by 6. So here what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on sketch. I'm going to create my sketch on this face and I'm going to click OK. Now here I'm going to create my rectangle, a corner rectangle. Somewhere over here, make sure you don't create a corner rectangle on the midpoint. I'm going to make the two sides equal. Okay, and here I'm going to give the height of 6 and from the base I'm going to give a dimension of 7. So once I'm done with that, the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on mirror in the curve rule because that will help me to make my selection faster. In the curve rule I'm going to select connected curve. I'm going to select any one line of this entire curve. Then in the center line I'm going to select the Z axis and here I'm able to mirror this on the other side. Now once the mirror is done, we can click on finish, we can click on extrude and now we can change the direction and again I want a through cut so again I can do the same thing. In the end limit, I can select the option called until next and here I can click OK. So this is how I have created this particular cut. Now basically we are very close to finishing the model itself. So next thing what we are going to do is we are going to make this particular part. Now for making this particular part, I have to create a proper size rectangle that is of 36 by 25. So let us start by doing that. So here I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane and the sketch will be of, uh, it will be a corner rectangle. So here I'm creating a cor rough corner rectangle. The length of the corner rectangle is going to be 36 and the height of the corner rectangle is going to be 25. Now once I'm defined with the length and the width, then I'm going to select the midpoint either of the right side vertical line or the left side, left side vertical line, the midpoint need to be selected and along with that I'm going to select the origin and make them horizontally aligned. Now once I'm done with that, I'm going to create some more detailed over, diagram over here, detailed part here. So here I'm going to create a circle and then I'm going to create a line that is a line from this center, basically not from the center of the circle itself, from this side till this line and from this side till this line. Now there are possibilities where the line is not horizontal so you need to select the line and if you see this constraint here you have to apply that constraint. If you don't see that constraint means the line is already horizontal and you don't have to apply that constraint. So here again I'm going to apply the horizontal constraint to the line. Now I'm going to click on the trim command and I'm going to trim the extra part which we have over here. Now once we are done with that then what we are going to do next is we are going to create uh, this particular depth of 18 and this particular width of 12. Now here what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose rapid dimension from the bottom of this arc till the top of the line, we are going to define the depth of 18 and from this side to this side, we are going to define a depth of 12. Now once we are done with that, this is how this entire sketch is going to look like. Now I can click on finish and to show you some more advanced modeling techniques, what I'm going to do is I'm going, not going to select anything for my extrude, so I'm pressing escape. Okay, by pressing escape, you are actually deselecting any selected geometries. Now here I'm clicking on extrude and here we have selection rules for extrude as well. So here in the section selection rule, I'm selecting region boundary curve and here I'm selecting this region as a region boundary for my extrude. 
Now what I'm doing next is I'm defining the height of the extrude over here. So here I'm defining the height of my extrude as 12. If you look at the model, okay, this is how high this particular thing is going to go. And this red color dotted line indicate this particular cutout. Now once I'm done with that, I'll click OK and I can hide my sketch. Now in this particular extrude, it was very important that we have to choose a Boolean operation as unite. So if you're choosing Boolean operation as subtract, this will not work. Now how to go back to extrude and modify that? It's very simple. You just need to double click on the extrude, which you have already created. And because it's a history based modeling software, it remembers all your steps, what you have taken so far to create this model so that you can go back to any step you want and you can do make necessary changes. Now here I'm going to select the last extrude, which I have just created. And here I'm going to click on this option called mirror feature. If your version looks different than what I'm using, I would recommend you to search over here for the command called mirror feature. So here I'm going to click on mirror feature and here in mirror plane, I'm going to select an existing plane, which is there over here, the YZ plane in this case. And I'm going to click OK so that the mirror is perfectly completed. Now for the last command to complete this model, we need to provide the radius of six to all the edges. So here I'm going to define an edge print. And as I told you, I like to define the radius value first and then make a selection. So here I have defined the radius value of six. And then now I'm selecting all the edges which are required to have a radius value of six. So same on both the sides. Now you might ask me why the, why we didn't create a mirror after the fillet. And at that, I want you to answer that particular question for me. Okay. You can even try creating a fillet first and then trying to mirror and you can do both the things and you can understand the difference. It's very simple. It's very clear. So you can also uh, let me know why exactly we didn't create the fillet uh, before we started with mirror. Now, once we are done with that, I can click OK. And this is how the fillet is going to look like. Now, once this particular part is filleted and completed so far, then what we can do is before saving this particular file, we can go to the view tab. In the view tab, we are going to change the view orientation to isometric. Now to change the view orientation to isometric, what you can technically do is you can simply press the home button on the keyboard and here the view orientation will change to isometric. Now here I'm going to press control J. Then I'm going to select the body. I'm going to select OK for this particular body. And then I'm going to change the color of this body. So here I'm clicking on color and now changing the color of this body to let's say I'm going to choose the color from this list. So here I'm going to change the color to pale stone. So once I select the color, I'll click OK, apply and OK. So I have successfully com completed the first part. Okay. And I hope you will also do complete the first part. Okay. Of this particular training. Okay. So thank you very much. Meet you for the next one.